Hi, welcome back to our channel. Um, I'm Jessica. You will notice that Sheila is missing today. Um, I'm actually weirdly nervous to film by myself. wanted to film a video today because I wanted to answer some of the questions that I've been asked about uh, shared motherhood, reciprocal IVF and generally like how I'm feeling as the non-carrying mother. So I've taken some notes of things I want to mention but generally I have got a cup of tea and I'm planning just to kind of talk through where I'm at. Um, I know a couple of people have messaged me who are in the same sort of a position asking like how am I feeling and we obviously talk a lot about um, or well certainly I talk a lot about how Sheila's feeling and what's going on with her so I think I just wanted to take a few minutes just to sit down and talk a little bit about what it's like in the role of supportive partner so yeah let's kind of get into it. For anybody who doesn't know um, Sheila and I have been going through reciprocal IVF um, we're using my eggs and Sheila is carrying the pregnancy. I'm doing this as if she's here but obviously she's not. So we have been going through reciprocal IVF. We are now seven weeks and four days pregnant. I say we so this is the first thing I come up against. Do I say we are pregnant? I am obviously not pregnant. Sheila is pregnant but it's our baby so I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. And I, I assume there's probably lots in this that links back to heterosexual couples and probably partners feeling similarly. Um, but I don't know if there's a difference in terms of being female. Um, like, I think a man could say that their partner is pregnant. Um, and I guess I could say Sheila's pregnant, but often I get set, like get asked like, oh, how does it feel? That you guys are pregnant like a plural so that's the first thing that, that I came up against um when we found out she was pregnant like how do I how do I what language do I use so that's all kind of new for me um at the moment and it was the first thing I wasn't really expecting to even I hadn't even thought about that um most of this stuff I haven't thought about and I suppose to give you a bit of history on me and why this is all very new and probably sounds very uh I was gonna say immature but that's not probably fair to myself um before I met Sheila I had only ever dated men. Um, Sheila had also only ever dated men so this was a surprise to both of us and as you can imagine to all of our families and um, thank you families if you're watching and um, for being very supportive. Um, but as a result when I thought about starting a family I always imagined myself pregnant. So when you are little and you think about your life or when you're grown up and you think about your life and you think about what you want um, I always imagined when I thought about pregnancy, I always just pictured myself pregnant. There was just, there was no other alternative. I hadn't considered another option. Um, I had never assumed that I would end up marrying a woman. Um, I didn't know that that was going to be in my future. So as a result, I had never thought about it. That is part of why I have all of these thoughts and feelings now as it's happening, because that's obviously quite a big shift for me in terms of what I expected versus what reality is. And I have a real, I, I suppose I want to kind of like have a disclaimer in that um, I feel nervous about sharing some of this stuff because I don't want to be seen as complaining because we've been so lucky with IVF and we've been so unbelievably lucky to get pregnant first time. Um, everything went smoothly and as, as well as it could uh, so far, touch wood. Um, I don't want to, I don't ever want to be come across like I'm like upset about any of it because it's, it's, I'm not at all. I'm absolutely delighted. I'm so happy to be in the position that we are in. I suppose it's just different. It's different to what I thought it would be. And each time I come up against one of these kind of like feelings, like even just something so simple as like, do I say we are pregnant? Because I'm not pregnant. Sheila's pregnant, but it's my baby as well and it's my genetics and how do I so all of these things that's obviously just the first example but that that's why I feel the way I do just I think it's important to have some context to that as well um so it's all new for me totally new um nothing 
I had never thought about like, oh, will I be the one carrying or will my partner? Because I did not imagine that I would marry a woman. Um, so when we decided about who would carry the pregnancy, I think we said this in one of our previous videos, but if you haven't watched that one or you're new to our channel, uh, welcome. I, when we were talking about it, we were discussing like, how would we do that? Um, I had followed a lot of IVF stories and videos for quite a long time because a couple of my friends were going through IVF um, they were in heterosexual relationships, so um, had some sort of kind of fertility issues. So as a result, I had kind of read up and watched a lot of YouTubes about people going through IVF so I could be a supportive friend. So even before Sheila and I ended up together, I knew quite a lot about IVF, probably more than your average person. Um, so as soon as we started thinking about a family, I already was fairly clued up on like how the process worked and what we might do. But the biggest thing to decide was whose eggs would we use and who would carry the pregnancy. So we spent a lot of time talking about that, like around this time last year, um, right before lockdown, we were away. We, we actually went for our first clinic appointment and then went on holidays to discuss like kind of the findings. Um, and at the, clinic, the first clinic appointment, they kind of said to us because of Sheila's age that it would make more sense for me to use my eggs. Um, regardless of who would carry that they suggested we use my eggs as that would be, I think they gave Sheila about a likelihood of about 3% and they gave me about 35 to 38% chance of it being successful. So obviously that's quite a big difference. So when we went away, we kind of just settled quite quickly on that makes the most sense. And genetics were never the most important thing to either of us. So that was kind of how we got to where we did. Um, from there we then had to decide who would carry the pregnancy and i have a massive desire to carry children again i've always assumed i would i've always assumed it would be me um so as a result i was quite keen to do that um sheila initially was uh less enthusiastic about it mostly just because of her age and again because she'd been dating men she just kind of assumed she would never carry children like she had got to that stage in her life where she was like it's probably never going to happen for me so she had kind of almost gone through a grieving process and was accepting that that wasn't going to happen for her so when I said oh I'd really like to her instant thought was oh well I won't then um and then that took some backpedaling so okay like why are we saying that and you know are you saying because you don't want to are you saying because you're afraid are you saying it to make me happy so we went through that whole process together and I don't know, I think we spoke about that a bit before anyway. I don't want to get into that too much about how she felt without her here. But for me, I suppose to share my side of that, I was worried about being jealous, if I'm honest. Like that was my thing initially. I was worried that I would feel left out. Um, and that because I want it so much and I want to be pregnant so much, that seeing her be pregnant would be hard. And um, that was, they were my kind of concerns. Um, ultimately, it's really about the pregnancy because to me, once the baby's here, it's here. Um, I do have some anxiety about when the baby's here, if Sheila is breastfeeding, that I will be a bit redundant. Um, that is one of my big fears, but I, I kind of also know that that's not true. Like if I use my rational head, I know that I am not gonna be redundant and I will be helpful. Um, but that's kind of similar to my role now. So I'll kind of get to that. But generally speaking, we we're talking about the pregnancy. And for me, that was my fear. Like, what if I'm jealous? What if I can't um, be a very good support? Uh, what if I want to be pregnant and what if I struggle then if she's having a hard time or um, if it's difficult for her like will I feel like what will I feel will I feel like oh I maybe could have done that better or I wouldn't like you know that just those normal feelings that you might have um, yeah I'm distracted because I think that our Sainsbury's order just arrived I will be right back I'm back <laughs> yeah that was a uh, that was our Sainsbury's order. So Sheila's up doing uh, interviews today. So I had to go grab it. Can I have some tea? So where was I? I think I was talking about how my expectations have changed. And mostly that's been fine. So I think my worries about being jealous and stuff. A lot of my friends were really supportive and really heard me. Um and kind of challenged me to see the other side of that which is that I'm also really lucky that we can have a family without me having to be pregnant and actually to kind of see the bonuses in that too like I don't have to go through all of that Sheila does and pregnancy isn't all joy and light and happiness as I'm sure many of you know 
Um, sorry, I'm out of breath from like running up and down the stairs and unloading all the sensory stuff really fast. Um, yeah, so I kind of started to see the more positive side of being the other mother. And that kind of helped me initially to be like, oh, this is great. Like I can hand you my genetics and you can grow this baby for nine months and then we're going to have a baby and I don't have to do that. So there is definitely a positive side to it. So that balanced out my kind of views because I think you always kind of worry about the worst case scenario. Like you worry that you're not going to be happy or you're not going to be good enough. Or I also worried a lot about whether or not I'd be supportive enough because I don't know, I, I guess if I'm really honest and maybe you guys have picked up on this, like in our relationship, I am probably the more like, oh, what's the right word? I was going to say needier and that's definitely not true. Actually, maybe Sheila is, but I think I... I know the kind of attention that I like and that I need and it's not about being attention seeking but I think we all have those kind of needs and with my kind of job and the type of person that I am I'm pretty good at asserting them and I think I was worried about how that would be for everything all the kind of attention to be directed at Sheila and what that would feel like for me and that sounds really spoilt but actually that's just a fact and it, if you know me you might know that that's true and it was just something I was worried about um I think anybody again who knows us both as a couple probably would have said if who if, if you ask them who should carry the baby most of them probably would have said me based on kind of being younger um that I might have managed better and Sheila being a very very supportive partner would have probably done that role really well so I think we both would have fit automatically into those roles and we did lean towards doing it that way for that reason um I really wanted to challenge myself to not do it for that reason that didn't feel like a good enough reason to me and um, I didn't want Sheila to miss out on that opportunity because I was being selfish I was really keen to make sure that she felt that she could have that support and that we are a team at the end of the day so I really challenged her to think about what she really really wanted rather than like going based on being afraid because I think if we make decisions based on fear we have regrets and actually initially because the way IVF started and because we were using my eggs it was all about me to start with anyway because it was like I started the stims first and I had to kind of do all of the shots and do the trigger shots and then I had the eggs retrieved and then we watched the eggs grow and everybody was asking me how I was and so I, I was really involved um initially obviously and then once the embryo went into Sheila that was like the end of my role so there was nothing else kind of for me to do in relation to the pregnancy. And that feels very like the man, right? <laughs> like the man in the relationship sets his seed and then the woman does the rest. And that was very much my experience of it. Like I was involved initially and I'm not. I thought I was okay. Um, I thought I was doing pretty well. I definitely am doing a good job of looking after her and being supportive. I feel confident about that. But last night I had a bit of a wobble and I do think it's probably because I'm, I would be due my period if I didn't have a coil, I would be due my period. I'm quite emotional and quite tired this week. So I think that all those things fed into it. But I did start having those feelings about um, like attention, if I'm honest. And I, this is hard stuff to talk about, right? But I started to feel like... Um, at the moment, all of my attention is on Sheila. Like, is she eating? Is she drinking? Is she well? Has she rested? What does she need tonight? Does she need a night off? Does she need, you know, what does she need? Can I make good snacks? Can I make sure she's healthy? Like, I'm constantly like thinking about that. And she is also constantly thinking about that. So she's thinking like, oh, have I had enough rest? What does the baby need? So her focus is on the pregnancy and my focus is on her. And as a result, nobody's focus is on me. And again felt like I was doing fine with that but then last night really realized that I was quite vulnerable and was quite needy and was like asking her like like for feedback all the time I I, I could hear myself being like oh are you like are we okay is, is everything okay and feeling wobbly and feeling a bit lost everybody in my life when they message me they say how's Sheila and I say oh Sheila's fine she's this she's that the other like people don't message and say like how I am. Some people are kind of conscious of that and will say like, how are you both? I, I get it. Like everyone wants to know how she is, how's the pregnancy? And I do, like that's the first thing I think of is how Sheila. Um, but I realised last night that, that was becoming quite like a responsibility because I felt like I was carrying quite a lot of that. Like I was looking after her, she was looking after her and I wasn't really being looked after. So I don't say that to like sound spoiled. I say it to people who are in this position to make sure that you also check out with what you need because it's hard it's really hard like you're holding their the other person's anxiety about the pregnancy and your own anxiety 
but for me like I don't want to always be like well what do you feel now how do you feel now what's going on now because I know she's already stressed out with that so she's having a break from that I don't want to then be like well how are you it was hard like it is hard and it's not as hard as being pregnant I keep telling myself that like she has it harder than I do physically and probably emotionally because she's she's feeling all those feelings all of the time and my job is to support her um but I also need to make sure that I look after myself but it can be really hard my experience anyway is that it's really hard to share some of that feedback because you don't want to add to their feelings you don't want to make them feel worse she's already feeling nauseous tired starving all the time um, she doesn't feel like herself, she doesn't feel normal in her body, like her boobs hurt, she feels swollen and bloated. She does not need me to then be like, oh, I'm unhappy, like, give me attention. So there's like a guilt that comes with that as well. Like, how do, how do you as the other mother get your needs met by your partner and the main person that you need your needs to be met by without adding to their stress? Um, and I, I guess for me, I don't want to get to a place where we build up resentment because actually right now I'm doing a lot of that for her. I'm doing a lot of holding her needs and her worries and making sure she's okay and I think if I was to do that for nine months and never kind of have that reciprocated I would be really resentful and she probably wouldn't even know that was happening so yeah I don't know if that really makes sense it's probably a little bit long-winded but that was part of the, the realization I had yesterday and like we are only eight weeks we still have a long road ahead of us um but that was just really how I felt that was just the feeling that I had um at the end of yesterday I think on top of that, um, there's something about my role, like what is my role and what is my responsibility? And for me, the way that I, the actually part of what triggered my mini meltdown last night was I didn't have anything else to research. I had run out of things to research, right? Which I know, I know you're probably laughing along with me at eight weeks is ridiculous. Part of the reason for that is because I can't research any more of the big stuff until we get further down the line because we're not going to buy a, we, you know, we're not going to, I'm going to say buy a car seat. I already know which car seat we want, but we're not going to buy the big ticket items until we are further down the road. So there's not really any point in me kind of doing a lot of work on working out what we want and need. Um, I suppose to backpedal a little bit, the reason I'm talking about this is because that is how I have felt useful. And um, that's how I have started to shape my role. I don't know if that's similar to how other people feel or how men feel in relationship. Like for me, um, trying to feel useful is really important because you're not that useful <laughs> to your partner. Like looking after her is one of my responsibilities, but also like in terms of how am I useful to the baby, I'm doing a lot of research. So researching the car seat, researching the pram, researching baby bags, researching monitors. I signed up to which I've been comparing all sorts of products. I've been online looking at what other mums do and what they need and what they don't need and watching YouTube videos of, you know, what's my baby bag? And then six months later, what I definitely did not need in my baby bag. <laughs> like, so I'm using all of this and I'm watching a lot of this and going down loads of rabbit holes, cloth nappies. I know I've mentioned that previously. Um, if you're new to the channel, I'm a little bit obsessed with cloth nappies because there, there's so much to learn and it's really interesting. And um, there's so many brands to research and like, it's quite a minefield and it also, they're all beautiful. So you can find a brand you like and then you can go down a whole other rabbit hole of like prints and stuff. I will do a video on that at some point. I know a few people responded to my last video and said yes, please to that. So um but these are all the kind of things I have kept distracted with and it has made me feel useful because I can go back to Sheila and be like oh look I found this what do you think and she's like yeah and then that makes me feel good and feel helpful um it also makes me feel a bit more like a mom because when I think about a baby I'm thinking about I was gonna say I'm thinking about a baby of course I am I'm thinking about the actual baby that I'm going to hold when Sheila thinks about a baby, she thinks about the baby that is inside of her. So we are already sort of at different stages in like how we see the pregnancy, how we see the baby. Like when I think of us having a baby, I think of like October. When she thinks of us having a baby, she thinks of right now. And obviously I know, I'm not stupid, I know that this is happening now. But the bit where I will have anything to do with the baby is not until October. So in my head, I'm like doing all this prep for October. I'm like thinking about like, what do we need by then? What what can I set up? I'm like, and I've always in our in our relationship, I'm the one that decorates the house and makes plans and decides what to do. Um, Sheila has lots of opinions and gets involved for sure, but I definitely lead on a lot of that stuff just because I'm really interested in it. 
um, and she doesn't care as much like it's more just I really love doing all that stuff and I have had a lot of that with planning already with the pregnancy but of course it's so early so every time I start getting carried away I'm then like okay it's too early for that I can't I need to stop um and yesterday I hit a bit of a wall with that like I was kind of stuck so I bought a lot of kind of nappies and cloth nappies and things probably can't buy any more until the baby's here because we need to see what works and doesn't work and what we like and maybe we won't even use it or maybe we'll use all of it and so I'm kind of stuck with that and um, we did actually buy a pram only because the pram I wanted was like £1,100 and um, after all my research, the one that goes in my car seat that I really want, I found one on Gumtree that was a deal that I just couldn't, I couldn't miss it. Um, I got it for 300 It's basically new. I wouldn't have known it was used except the tyres have like outside on them. But like, anyway, that's a whole side story. So I've already sorted the pram. It's in my house. It's downstairs already. Um, I know what I kind of want to do at the nursery, but again, too soon to start doing it. So I got a bit stuck. And because I got stuck and I didn't know what to research and didn't know what to do, I felt really useless and it triggered that for me for sure. Like I was like feeling like, oh, what do I do now? And I kind of asked Sheila, like, I don't know, I don't know what to research. And she was like, oh, it's fine. We've loads of time. And I felt like really, probably really dismissed. And I think because I was already feeling quite like emotional. Um, but it's, it kind of, that's what set me off initially because I was like, well, I know we've loads of time, but there's like, this is what makes me happy and it's what makes me feel involved and this is what made me feel useful, etc. So I struggled when I couldn't look at stuff. And it's also why I really struggle when people tell me it's too soon, because I know it's too soon. I know that I don't need to be told, but some, you know, some family and stuff like, uh, not even, not, not necessarily family, but like some people in our lives, it's probably a fair way of saying it. Um, are like oh why are you buying that or that's too soon or that and I'm and I'm like I know but actually this is how I f this is how I feel involved this is this is my job and um that in itself is good to me like I appreciate that we we might lose this baby it's just a fact we might um if we did I don't think I would look back on this time and regret the 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 energy I've spent because this is how I felt involved this is how I felt like we were having a baby. Um, I can't look after the baby. I can't do anything for the baby. So this is how I feel useful. Um, so that that's one of the ways that other people make me feel like, like not use like not they don't make me feel. I hate that term. I don't think anybody can make you feel anything. But that that when people say that to me, that triggers that for me for sure. Like oh, it's too soon to be doing that. Why are you doing that? Um, I instantly have that feeling of, like. I know but what else am I meant to do yeah so that is one of the ways that people's words get to me and they don't mean to because they're right it is too early um but it that it does kind of like irk me um another one is uh, mother's day is coming up and a few people have now said to me like oh um how are you going to spoil Sheila for mother's day and I don't know what they mean by that they might mean how are you going to spoil Sheila? And they might also ask Sheila, how are you going to spoil Jess? I don't think anybody's asking Sheila that. Nobody's asked Sheila what they're going to do, what she's going to do for me for Mother's Day. Um, but everybody's asked me, what am I going to do for Sheila? And I think that that's a really interesting, weird sort of dynamic that's happening in approaching Mother's Day, where I think that people in our lives see her now as a mother and don't see me as one yet. I I don't know how I feel about that because on the one hand I'm like that's crap I'm already mother like I if she is I am like we're in this together um but and the other part of me is like it's kind of true I don't feel like a parent I don't feel like a mother I I kind of know it's happening I like the scan helped a bit like these things like they help me feel connected um but it doesn't feel that real yet to me and it's really really real to her so it's a funny sort of thing when people say that. And again, nobody means any harm. Everybody's just being really nice, like, oh, how are you gonna spoil Sheila? But 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 there's a there's a sort of indirect thing in that about like rather than what are you guys gonna do together for Mother's Day or are you gonna treat each other or asking Sheila what are you gonna do for Jess and asking me what am I gonna like or ne asking neither of us because neither of us are mothers yet. Like I, I don't know, but there's definitely a weight already associated with it, which I've noticed, and it's just interesting to me. I haven't felt massively upset by it because I think most people have meant it really nicely. Um, but I just, I do notice it. It's in my head. I, I can feel it when people say that. I have this like, 
uh, feeling towards it. Um, and I wonder how that will develop over the next nine months. Like, I wonder these kind of um, implicit meanings in what people say and how people see us. Like, I'm kind of curious about how that will develop and how that will feel as the other mother. Um, and I'm also, I keep thinking about the future as well. Like, if we were to carry a second, carry, we were to carry, see, this is my language. If I was to carry a first child and we were to be pregnant again, we'll go with that. Um, the, we would use the same embryos that we already have because we have eight embryos frozen and like we're obviously going to use them this is why we use my eggs so I will be carrying a, an embryo that is genetically mine part of how I feel connected to Sheila's pregnancy so far is that genetically I know that I'm linked to that so it feels like our baby more I, I don't know how I'd feel if it would feel different or not um, I've heard people on YouTube say it doesn't and I've heard other people say it really does feel different um I don't know how it would feel for me and I do think about what that'll be like for her you know in the future if that was to be the case um because I definitely have a feeling of like actually that the, the baby that's growing looks like me or could look like me who knows it might also look like who's uh, whose name I shall not mention and um, although it's not obviously a real name but anyway our sperm donor um yeah I don't know I lost my train of thought there but I think that helps me to connect, that I know that that baby belongs to me somehow. And I wonder how that is for people who don't have the genetic connection, um, if it feels the same or if it feels different, I'm not sure. But that's just, I suppose that's a little bit about where I am and just this, the little kind of idiosyncrasies that I'm starting to notice and things I'm starting to like feel from other people. And there, we all have these biases, these kind of unnamed biases that we carry I have them Sheila has them my friends have them family has them about what this all looks like and what it means and I guess I just really wanted to open the discussion today about this and be really honest about where I am now and see how that changes over time because like of course I have fears about stuff like I worry that I won't bond with the baby because it won't feel like my baby I worry that when it's born I will be useless because Sheila will be breastfeeding and one of the things actually that triggered that already was when I was researching cots and I was looking at the next to me cots and Sheila was talking about like how we would move the bed over and it was just assumed that we would move the bed over to make space for the baby on her side which of course makes sense and is the assumption but it still got me because in my head always when I had assumed about having a newborn baby I was thinking about it being next to me because that was just my expectation and now we make these different assumptions and and it's right and it's fair and the baby will lie next to Sheila but I have a moment of like oh yeah that's that makes the most sense um and of course if I show that Sheila immediately is like well we can put it at the end of the bed we can put it here or there or whatever and tries to make it better and actually I don't need to make it better it's fine that it's next to her it just takes me a minute you know it just takes me a minute to just to think oh yeah that that's where that baby would be um and and we don't know we don't know one we don't know if the baby's gonna get all the way to our arms we don't know if Sheila will breastfeed or not breastfeed she's hoping to um there's lot there's lots of things to that but these are just some of my fears and um the fear of not having a role is huge because I think the role that I had in my mind is so changed to where I am now and most of the time that feels fine and then sometimes it just gets me just a little thing just gets me and I think oh what what is the point one of the other ones was about me being off work so um we've talked a lot about maternity leave and what that will look like and who's doing what and my one of my kind of deal breakers in my whole life has always been that if I was to have a child I will do everything in my power to take the first year off and be with him um it's just how I've always been I've I've like and I get that that's quite a privileged view and not everybody can do that and I didn't know if I would ever be able to do it but in my head that was always what I was working towards like all of my plans have always my my main goal has always been to be a mother um I did a doctorate and even during the doctorate when people would be like what's your life ambition I'd be like to be a parent to be a stay-at-home mom like um so I've I've worked towards this for a really long time and when I have thought about the future, decisions I've made have always been about like, how can I have the most amount of time at home to be with my children? Cause that's what I want. My mum was a stay at home mum. Um, she did work, but she worked around our schooling and around us. And I have really clear, important memories of like coming home and she would be available to us. She was always kind of there and 
um like available I guess is the only word and and I know that that shaped a huge part of who I am and I know it was really important to me and I still remember it and I actually feel a bit emotional talking about that but I think they're the things that are really 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 important to me like I really want to be available I don't want to be a parent that works late and I know some people have to and like that's fine I just I wanted to do everything I could so that wouldn't be me so when we talked about maternity leave that was obviously quite a big trigger for me because um before like up until sort of early this year I was still working in the NHS and um I would have got two weeks maternity leave and that freaked me out I'm not gonna pretend otherwise like I was not gonna be okay with that ever um I want to be at home like that's my goal and I have been for a long time I have um I am also self-employed and I have been trying to make the leap to just being self-employed and that was one of the things that really pushed me over the edge was like I that and the fact that I wasn't actually that happy in my NHS job but I just I really wanted to be able to take the maternity leave that I want rather than the maternity leave that was dictated to me I appreciate again I hold my hands up we are in a really privileged position to be able to do that and um, my business is successful I've worked really hard at it it's not all luck um I've worked really hard at my business it is successful enough for me to do that and um Sheila's job will allow us to do that as well so I am now self-employed and I'm working two days a week so that is already a good step but I still have some wobbles about what will happen when the baby's here and Sheila will take six months off at least and then we'll potentially go back to work um and I I, I want to be around now I'm not going to be able to be around for the first year it's just not going to be real life like I have a business I'm not going to get everything that I want and that's okay um but the reason I was telling you this story is because some of my friends and my family members have said things like you know oh this is just kind of what people do they go back to work you're the other pa parent you will have to go back to work and like that is true they are not wrong <laughs> but that is not what I've wanted that's not what I've worked towards for my whole life <laughs> like I'm not okay to just accept oh well I am the other parent and therefore like that's never what we have been about you know one of the most amazing things about being in a relationship with a woman is that all of those gender stereotypes and expected roles and you know who does what jobs and who does who does has what role in the relationship they all are up for grabs they're all questions you can you can reshape yourself into anything um nobody assumes who takes out the bins in this house um although most of you probably guess Sheila and you'd probably all be right um but generally speaking like the we we have different roles I do all of the kind of handiwork in the house that's my dad taught me to do a lot of those kind of jobs Sheila's dad taught her similar like we're both actually pretty handy I'm probably a bit braver with it um so we don't I, anyway the reason I'm telling you this is that we don't have a lot of those gender roles and I'm not saying that this is a gender role but it, it kind of is as well like because the the birthing mother will often be off because they've given birth and the other partner will go back to work and for me I just wasn't willing to accept that that's just what we do um because that's not ever what I wanted and not what I worked for so things like that I find hard when people have expectations because that's just what you do and that's just what you do in this role as the other parent and I I I challenge that all the time um I challenge that with them I challenge that in my own head Sheila and I challenge that together like what's right for our family rather than that's just what you do um I'm working on a way to be able to take the first couple of months off work um I don't know how possible it's going to be I'm working hard at it um but I would like at least a couple of months off and then I'm going to work like one or two days around around the baby and around Sheila and I'm going to be at home and that's really important to me so again, I'm, I'm just using this as an example about other people's expectations and society's expectations on what it means to be the other parent and how that just doesn't always gel with me, um, particularly because my expectations have always been so different. Um, so I, I am more up for challenging those things and trying to find a way that's right for us rather than what we should do. So yeah, I'm definitely way over the time that I wanted to be sat here and my tea's going very cold because I talk way too much and drink too little. Mm, it's pretty cold um 
yeah, I hope that was helpful. I think that should have answered a lot of the questions. I know some people have messaged me questions like, you know, how do we get received by other people? Do I feel left out? And um, somebody asked me about maternity leave. Um, somebody else asked me like, just how do I feel in this role? And um, I think I've probably answered those questions. I think, as I said, it, might, it was extremely important to me just to get the conversation going about this today and just share like where I am now. I also really want to be able to look back on it because I, I expect it will change. Um, it changes all the time. I actually really love this role so far. I know it sounds like I don't, but I do. Um, I really love being a, su a support to Sheila and um, she's, she's not really used to that. She's not great at being looked after. Um, that's part of why she needs so much reassurance. Like when she asks me, you know, for something she needs, whether it be, can we go to bed early? Can we have this for dinner? Can we, whatever, like, and I, when I say asks me, I don't mean she needs my permission, but she'll just say like, can we do this tonight? Um, she then immediately will be like, only if you're okay with it. Cause she doesn't want me to ever do anything for her. It's just not in her nature. She's very independent. She's used to looking after herself. Um, but I think she's really enjoying being looked after and I'm really, really enjoying looking after her. Um, that also makes me feel quite emotional because I feel really passionately about that and I'm really loving just being able to look after her and I'm really loving her letting me look after her. Um, it's just sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I think I need to make sure that I'm looking after me too and that I'm still able to ask her to look after me too because she's well able for that. Um, I don't think it's selfish. I don't think it's unfair. You know, when the roles are reversed, I want to remember this. I want to look back and watch this and I want to remember to look after her as well. Um, even if one day, hopefully, I am pregnant. Um, so yeah, whether you are the kind of pregnant partner and um, the other partner, I don't know, I don't really like this other mother words, but anyway, I'm just going with it. Um, regardless of which part you are, I hope that you can get something from this video. Um, this really is just my kind of feelings on it, my opinion. I'm really trying to be honest. It's hard. Like I, I can hear myself when I say something I'm like, oh, I hope that that's not perceived as X, Y, Z. Um, but I'm just going to try and hold on to the fact that I kind of trust our little community here. I trust that you guys receive me with um, a pinch of salt. <laughs> and yeah, I think that I will probably wrap it up there. I'll probably try and edit this down because I know it's very long and very rambly. Um, but yeah, we are going to do a questions and answers soon um, because there's lots of questions that have come in that aren't really about me as such, but more about us, about how we met, about how we made the decisions that we did. Um, so we will do that at some point so if you do have any questions either for me or for us and um, you can either put them in the comments below you can come and join us over on instagram where we do provide more live updates um, and over there you will find um, you know you can you can comment or message us or private message if you want to ask something so feel free to engage with us here or on instagram and i hope you like the video and i hope that you receive me okay that's me looking for reassurance. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Take care.